there's been frustration and outrage in the streets, communities demanding justice for people killed by police. In the months of unrest, we've heard a lot of voices, but we haven't often heard from the police themselves. So we organized a Zoom, and I spoke with five leaders in law enforcement from L.A., Portland, Seattle, Austin, and New York. Between the five of you, you have about 100 years of law enforcement experience. Every one of them says policing has fundamentally changed. We are handling so much more beyond what the normal basic police academy used to teach us. The answer has become, just call the police. Just call the police. It just becomes this continual circle of interaction with the police and people who need more assistance than we're able to provide them. And they know they're under scrutiny. So much has changed in terms of technology, in terms of the level of accountability. The death of George Floyd sent ripples across the country. With the help of a lot of activists and a lot of people who actually want to see change, um, things have been changing. But union representative officer Paul Nunziato criticizes New York City's reaction, passing a law banning chokeholds or recklessly compressing a suspect's diaphragm. It was a snap judgment by the politicians. So if if you're arresting a violent suspect and happen to end up on their back trying to handcuff them, you broke the law. I've been a cop for 33 plus years. It's probably the dumbest thing I've seen yet. Sergeant Perez, I saw you nodding along to some of that. Yeah, the one thing we can't do is remove tools from officers that are truly trying to do what's right. I don't want to put my hands on anybody. I don't want to put my hands on anything. If I can get voluntary compliance through a lot of training, implicit bias, de-escalation tools, I think I've gained the knowledge to do that. After all the demonstrations we've seen and, and violence that's led to charges against police officers, there is so much distrust of police across the country right now. Do you understand that distrust? We have to start gaining back the trust. Police officers have to reach across that table and bring community members, and community members are going to have to do the same thing and reach across that table and bring police officers and figure out what your community needs and wants and try to figure out how to work towards that direction. Officer Bohannon, you've said you support defunding the police. We all know defunding the police means a lot of different things. I will support if... We're taking funds and saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. These are the resources that are going to be available to officers. So then when I go to a call and I can say, hey, there's actually a homeless outreach team that can come and show up or there's a mental health professional that can come and show up to this instead of me, I support that 100 percent. You can't take away money from the police departments and expect the police departments to live up to these standards that they're putting on us right now. Families who've lost loved ones at the hands of police, a lot of them believe that there's inherent racism in the entire system. Well, you know, let's be frank, there's inherent racism across the entire country in many systems. Your education system, your healthcare system, you know, I would even say in journalism we've seen elements of that. So let's not single out one particular entity, but let's work collectively to try to, you know, get to the root causes of why there are disparities. And certainly policing is one where people focus the most because we have the, uh, you know, the ability and the authority to take a life and there's nothing more tragic than seeing that happen uh, unjustly. Do you all think you're getting second guessed a lot right now by people who don't understand your work? Absolutely. Absolutely. Two Houston police officers were shot around 930 this morning. There have also been many incidents recently of officers being attacked, being hurt. You've had officers killed. I mean, I wonder what that does to you all and to the people that you manage. Are you scared to go to work? Or has it changed the way you think about your work? We have a problem and we all know there's a problem when innocent, when, when people are getting killed, innocent people are getting killed at the hands of a police officer, but you're creating an us against them environment. A lot of that is being fueled by politicians. Nobody's ever been in our shoes. And I, and I encourage people, come right along. You, you wanna talk about transparency? Please come on a ride along with us. Sometimes what we forget are the officer's families and the officer's families see everything that goes on every night and they go home to families that are worried that they're going to die in the line of duty, maybe just sitting in their car. 
We also talked about the idea of national standards for policing, and they all generally support that notion. For example, Portland, Oregon still doesn't have body cameras on officers. And if there were a national standard, maybe they would. They'd like to see standards for what kind of training officers get at the police academy, what kind of restraints officers use. Savannah? A good conversation, Kate. And, you know, sometimes folks talk about civilian oversight of police. How did that, mm -hmm. how did that uh, play with, with the folks you talked to? Yeah, it was interesting. I asked about that, and their answers are more nuanced on that. Two of our panel really bristled at that idea because they believe civilians don't understand the job of police, and they believe the chief should have the last word. Officer Bohannon, though, from Austin, says he thinks some kind of oversight and buy-in from the community is absolutely essential.